Hey guys, this is Alana, and you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast with me and Jamie Hampton. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. How are you? It's been a few days. I know we broke a record, I think, since everything started in terms of like days we went without talking. I know. <laughs> we had like an interview thrown in there last week, and so it kind of pushed it on. But yeah, how are things going at your place? Things are going well. I feel like spring's totally here. There's not really any more snow or mush or mud on the roads, and it's been nice and sunny. I've been spending time in the hammock. That's been really, really relaxing. So oh, things are going that's well neat. over here. Yeah. Oh, I miss our hammock. We have a, a yard full of mud right now, so we can't uh, put the hammock yeah. out. And mm -hmm. this morning it was beautiful. And I used to like to sit on the back porch because that's where we get our, our morning sun. <laughs> yeah. No you porch. That porch. <laughs> no. But actually this morning was cool. I So, I mean, I have just, I get these times where I've realized it's been just a ridiculous amount of time since I just actually sat down and spent time with God for mm -hmm. no reason other than to spend time with God. Like I do a lot of it with preparing mm -hmm. for blog posts or right, podcasts right. or even mm -hmm. praying with people on the screen or whatever, but right. just me, you know, just sitting yeah. there and doing my personal quiet time. And it had been a very ridiculously long time since I'd done that. And so this morning I did, I just took some time and did a short Bible study and it was great. It was really neat. Nice. And as often happens, what I was reading about paralleled something else that I had read and studied. Mm -hmm. And then I was listening to a podcast of a, um, a sermon and it was on the same thing. It was really neat. So yeah, cool. Yeah, it was good. So I, I definitely enjoyed that time. Yeah, we've started doing a Bible study at breakfast going through Judges, and that's oh, been pretty that's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had some interesting discussions. I'm trying to think of any of the more interesting, nothing's coming to the top of my head, but you know, like you start talking about one thing and then different things pop up from it. It's been pretty cool. That's neat. And it has a lot of the like things that would appeal to kids scattered throughout, oh, no like kidding. driving yeah. tent pegs through heads through someone's skull and, and yeah the, you know the fat you know and the abdomen and circling <laughs> yeah yeah all that fun stuff that's neat that is really cool it has been cool and we've been doing a lot of walks so yeah. scott and i have been doing a lot of walks and then we go on walks with the uh the animals that i don't want to name right now because they're in the office with me and they're gonna get excited <laughs> they will hear their names and not yeah. leave you alone for the next 30 yeah. minutes yeah, but it's been fun. You know, it's, I, I always love spring and I feel like, I don't know, we've had enough time to just sort of get used to this strange new normal and it's, it's all right. Yeah. Well, I feel like Alaska is probably ahead of a lot of places in terms of what we're doing. We're one of the few that are starting to reopen now. I mean, I think mm. maybe others are trickling in. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. have a good feeling for what everybody's going through. Cause I know there were still up until a little while ago, there were still kids in school and things like that. So I, yeah. I don't, I don't know, but I yeah, just, everybody's doing it a little differently, but yeah. Have you yeah. gone out since they've opened anything up yet? Not any more than I would have before. Just normal just, groceries and things. Well, yeah. and I don't really even go out for groceries anymore. I do the, um, I've been paying like the extra $10 to try and support people that are delivering the groceries. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Costco doesn't do that. So I've been doing Costco like okay. every three weeks or two weeks or something. That's not too three bad. weeks, three weeks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But we, uh, the one thing I did have to do was um, our oldest had an orthodontist appointment. So when they open things up for, and I don't, his is considered elective. So when they opened mm -hmm. that up, um, he needed a new, he needed to be adjusted and he needed to get right. rubber bands and, you know, it would have been a setback. And so we really deliberated over that. They called us on Thursday mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. said, we have a spot open. We want him to be seen on Monday, which was his normal appointment. And they just coincidentally okay. had opened up the mm -hmm. elective procedures. Okay. Um, they had extensive security in place as far as, mm -hmm. you know, it seemed, it seemed like they were handling it well. Like yeah. only the patient could go in and get seen by one person. They even had like clean mm -hmm. pens and dirty pens. I couldn't go in, which, yeah. So anyway, um, 
we prayed about it because my first inclination was, well, I don't have to do this. I'm not going to do this. But then I started thinking if he needs an adjustment, then do I want to pass up on it now the first day they open everything up or do I want to wait a couple of months when they've right already, well they try to trickle every yeah no, when I they've see what opened you mean. it up already and you know they know cases mm-hmm. are going to rise I mean they're just saying that they're like yeah the, as a result of opening things up we're going to see more cases so mm-hmm. we all three prayed about it and just felt he felt peace about it because he was at first like I don't know if I want to go even you mm-hmm. know because he hasn't been out of the house probably in yeah you know, who knows so all of that to say uh yes so we did take that calculated risk and let him do that and um, felt good about it. Um, But I will admit, like, as I'm hearing kind of rumblings with like youth groups saying, hey, things are starting to open up. We're going to try and make ways in the Mm, near future mm -hmm. for kids to start meeting in small groups. I'm not thrilled. I'm not. And I, I have to, you know, just wrestle with, okay, what part of this is fear? I don't want to operate under fear. But yeah. at the same time, I don't want to operate just assuming that someone else saying it's okay to do something means that it's okay for our family because I feel, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, my husband and I feel, uh, I think I think the word is stewardship. We feel this burden, this tremendous burden of stewardship. We want to steward the responsibility of leading our family, you know, to do mm-hmm. to make the right choice as well. And right. I think that's what everybody's dealing with on a daily basis right now is stewarding mm-hmm your personal choices. Um, my husband doesn't have a choice whether or not to go into work on certain days. There are things he has right. to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have a choice of whether to say, sure, go to youth group, go to hockey if they open that, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where we're at right now. And I will say that I'm definitely on the conservative side, both of us, my husband and I are both more mm-hmm. on the conservative side of wanting to wait a little longer rather yeah. than just go with the flow and, and do everything that we're open and allowed to do. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we haven't done anything yet with the kids, although one of our boys might have chipped his tooth yesterday and it was still kind of hurting today. So I'm hoping that if he needs to, um, yeah, because there are some appointments like that that you can make still. So Yeah. I mean, our pediatrician yeah. said they're even doing well visits now. So I, in the know, office. Yeah, in the office. Oh, okay. So. And I'm sure, again, they're taking certain precautions. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, I I definitely know that there are businesses that are hurting that Mm -hmm. need support. And it's everyone's trying to balance safety with opening things up financially so that Mm -hmm. we can survive. Yeah. And they're both important. And I do think it's just a personal decision. You know, the hard part probably is when you have family members who are kind of on opposite ends, you know, where one of them's like, yes, let's go out. And the others, no, let's not. And yeah, there does need to be a sense of just both balance and unity and respect. Mm -hmm. And I think a good question to be asking yourself is, am I doing this out of fear or am I doing this out of just sounds judgment? Because Mm-hmm. you can come to the same decision. You can choose to stay home out of sound judgment, but you could also choose to stay home out of fear. And I think that as long as kind of your your conscience check and your discernment are leading you to kind of conclude that you're doing this out of wisdom, and of course, nobody's going to know 100%, you know, we're going to get it wrong sometimes. But mm-hmm. I would say that's probably the biggest question is just, you know, am I having a fear response or... Am I just being wise? You know, that's one of the things we talked about in Judges because, you know, the Israelites, they would go through these cycles of Mm -hmm. disobedience and punishment, and then they'd cry out to God and he'd deliver them. And then they'd just start all over again. And so we talked about, yeah, sometimes, sometimes the consequences are just natural. Like God doesn't have to push a button (laughs) to, to make you experience that consequence, you know? So, and so we, we kind of had the talk, sometimes bad things happen. I don't want to say randomly because that makes it sound like God isn't in control, but sometimes they just happen and nobody's at fault other than, you know, we could blame it on Adam and Eve if we wanted. And sometimes bad things happen. And I think that it might be God's way to chastise us. And I think often bad things happen just because we made a silly decision, you know, like it's mm-hmm. some, it's some of each. Yep. So 
So how are you it. just kind of, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Mic dropped. You know, just how are you feeling? How are you doing? Are you weary? Are you energized? Are you cranky? Uh, today, I would say definitely I, I'm falling into like just today. It's funny. I mean, and I can usually sense the ebbs and flows of my, my hormones and my mm -hmm. just just the ups and downs that come with mm -hmm. life today for no apparent reason though i'm definitely feeling victimy <laughs> okay mm -hmm. and i'm feeling kind of uh like i had started to feel like i was emerging from like this self awareness of yeah i'm not being negative i'm being positive and i'm oh no <laughs> but today i'm um yeah they're just a i, I think i'm feeling like i'm not succeeding well at anything in this whole, mm. you know, I'm not, yeah. I, I've, and I think part of that is that I have spent way more time than I have chalked up to algebra, which has really? been, yeah. And, and it's actually getting better. My, my son, I think what had happened is we were working way too far ahead because he doesn't have anything on his calendar now till next Thursday. So I oh, think, okay. and I, I tried to, we tried to figure out, but the calendar's like the way that they do it, the way that they had the calendar was kind of confusing. So he was afraid he was falling behind. So he was doing Aww, like three guy. lessons and a quiz every day. And I oh, was like, okay. for the stuff that he was doing, I was like yeah. right there helping him because it was kind of confusing for him. Mm -hmm. On on one hand, it was one of the most fun things I've done all quarantine. I've loved it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's just been fun spending time with him working mm -hmm. together it kind of rem reminiscent of when i homeschooled him when he was Aww, younger and yeah. so it was fun but then i look and i'm like wow why isn't the house look better and why mm -hmm. have i not really like like i just woke up this morning and was like i need to have a quiet time i haven't been doing that where mm -hmm. is all this time going so it's yeah. that constant struggle of okay am i like how how do i have all this time but certain things aren't getting done I think in this case, a lot of it is this last week and a half has been like several hours of math a day. So, wow. Yeah, yeah that's intense. And is he doing okay or is he yeah. getting frustrated? Okay, no, good. he's, he's got just like time consuming mid nineties average. So he's doing great. It just takes mm -hmm. time to learn it and yeah. apply it and get the work done. But again, he's got a whole week of nothing. So I think he probably yeah. could have been, we could have been spending maybe one hour a day getting oh, down, okay. done but it's fine. Yeah. I don't have any regrets. So yeah, if that's the worst of my issues, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You? I think it's similar in that like my good days are really good. And then my bad days are really bad. Like there, there aren't too many in between days, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But in general, you know, I'm feeling optimistic. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling thankful. I think things are going pretty well. Um, I'd say we've had a little more family stress this week. You know, mm -hmm. I can tell that just all of us are um, things that might have slid off our backs, you know, in normal times are kind of getting nitpicked. <clears throat> and that's all of us. So that part's been a little hard, but it's also, hey, this is just a, a weird time. And I, I feel almost guilty. And I know we've talked about this before. Like, I feel guilty even saying this, because I know not everybody is in a position where they can say this, but I've, it feels like we're just on an extended staycation, mm -hmm. which is nice. You know, it's a nice feeling. And yeah, there's a little bit of stress and a little bit of um, tension. But in general, I think we're, we're all going to look back and be like, that was, that was cool. Like we're spending hours together as opposed to, you know, and, and we're not, even before this started, we're not the busiest of families, but just our time together all five of us as a family is probably tripled, quadrupled, mm -hmm. you know, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. I, um, well, just the thing, I would say the thing for me that has been the most, I won't say the most positive change. One of the most, one of the, one of the benefits to this whole thing for me mm -hmm. is one of my big struggles was, um, just right around kids coming home from school, it was like they would all come home and every night there was something, sometimes multiple somethings. Mm -hmm. I had to squeeze dinner in. 
yeah. I had been doing other stuff. And if I did not plan like crazy for what we were going to do for dinner, it was okay. Fast food or having to mm-hmm. buy something when we got to the, the hockey rink that has a restaurant mm-hmm. that you can get pizza that's way too expensive and things yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. that was a huge source of stress for me. And I have loved, because I love cooking and I've loved cooking. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what's really neat is it has totally flip-flopped and like 3.30, 4.30 is one of my favorite times because oh, cool. I have my list of like, I've actually been able to shop for two or three weeks at a time and be like, oh, this yeah. is what we're having for dinner. I've been able to use leftovers to make other things, which I, before mm-hmm. we would waste a lot of food because the time mm-hmm. that I did cook, I'd forget that stuff was in the fridge or I didn't right. have time to repurpose it. Or I should say mm-hmm. I didn't make time to plan. Yeah. So meal time, like meal prep time for me has been really enjoyable because I think that's maybe cool. I feel like that's one area that I have been succeeding at consistently mm-hmm. just out of necessity because we've got to eat and it's something that yeah. I have 330 hits. I'm like, oh, okay, let me start thinking about what I had planned or what we need to do. Yeah, our- that's fun. Yeah. So that was, that's pretty cool. So that's a positive. Um, but yeah, family tension. I could say that's, that's something with the kids. Um, mm-hmm. They're, they're kind of getting on each other's nerves. I think. Yeah, same here. Starting mm-hmm. to feel the gap of man, I'm not really able to see people my own age because there's he's such not a big around. Difference yeah, it's what like six, five, five years, years between yeah, and middle, yeah, and then two mm-hmm. more, two and a yeah. half more between the next two. The next no, that's one. an that's a significant gap for sure. Yeah, so I think he's he's starting to feel that too. So yeah. We were on a walk last night and my son saw one of his friends in the neighborhood just playing in the driveway. So they got to have a little like social distancing conversation and he was so just energized and happy by that. Like I I heard him like that night, he probably mentioned it six times. Like that's my first friend I've seen face to face. And, you know, it was really cool. Coincidentally, we had the same thing yesterday. So oh, yeah. my youngest um, daughter, there's a little girl that would come over to our house every morning before school. Her mm-hmm. mom teaches. And so she would come over for a while before school and we'd go to school together. So obviously mm-hmm. we haven't seen her in over a right. month. And mm-hmm. so my daughter, and I mean, they live a block away. So mm-hmm. one time I saw them biking past, but my daughter didn't. So yesterday they came by and the little girl had brought a drawing and some stickers and had wrapped it up with a string and had the long Aww. string and she took it and threw it and held the string in case it didn't make it into our That's yard. Cute. And then she let it go when she got it close enough. And so my daughter came and picked it up and she opened it up Aww. and read it. So of course then she ran in and like made a did something drawing, similar. Rolled it up and took it Isn't and left that cute? It on her porch. Yeah. So it was kind of fun, like the socially distanced interactions. It is, you know, like every time we go out walking, there's so many more people out than we've ever seen in the neighborhood before. You know, it's, it's, it's a neat feeling. Like we're finally getting to at least recognize faces of people. Like I dropped my house keys when I was walking with my husband the other day and the lady who picked them up asked Scott the next day when she saw him on a walk by himself, did you guys lose your keys? Like, you know, it was just, it's, I don't know. I I really feel like this is kind of how we've been meant to have been living this whole time. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, and the fact that before, I think we had been gravitating away from face-to-face interactions, thinking that virtual interactions through social media or whatever, you know, were Mm -hmm. fine. At least that's, I I sense that that's kind of how it was where it kind of took these face-to-face meetings for granted. And now Mm -hmm. that we can't Mm -hmm. have them as much, I think we realize how valuable they are and yeah, seek them out a little bit more or at the very least appreciate them more because they've been taken away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So uh, I've felt the same thing. It's it's been really neat to just have socially distanced highs. I I love yeah. these jewels of times when a neighbor will walk by and we can say hi. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of special in that way. Well, you want to dive into our just for fun question? Yes. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is fun. Okay. This is a role playing question. 
So you're a history teacher, like 70 years from now. So think about, or whatever the time frame was, like think about it about the distance when like you and I were learning about World War II growing up, right? Because that was like, it was probably the same for you. Like everybody's had a grandparent who fought in World War II or who had right. specific memories of World War II. So imagine you're a history teacher to kind of that group of kids, whatever that group of kids is going to be the equivalent. So what, how would you teach about the pandemic specifically? Like what were some of the positive outcomes that came about from it? And of course we don't know how it's going to end. So we get to make up the end. We get to make up all kinds of positive <laughs> stuff. I love this. Uh, let's see. Well, I would say number one, this pandemic has, well, so let me back up. So I know that there are places that, uh, that had systems in place for SARS, like places in Asia mm -hmm. that already had mm -hmm. SARS systems in place. Right. This being a relatively mild, I can't say mild, but what I totally get what you're saying. You know what it's I'm saying? Yeah, it's not like bubonic plague that's going to... Right. It's not going to wipe out... Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not going to wipe out everybody. Um, many people are surviving it and getting, you know, stay-at-home cases, right? Right. Not having to be hospitalized. So being that it's relatively mild, it set the stage for putting procedures in place that mm -hmm. actually were extremely beneficial um, to protect us when other things mm -hmm. came up, you know, other kinds of, of you know, emergencies came up. Mm -hmm. Not that I would hope that there would be more, but, you know. But you would hope that we'd be better prepared. Yeah. Um, I think out of it mm -hmm. also, um, it, I would say, and this, this kind of is a segue into our devotional, but I. Oh, you tricky, tricky. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, spiritual revival that there was actually uh -huh. because of the need for social media and digital church services, mm -hmm. there was actually a, a wave kind of like the equivalent of the baby boom, but it was a spiritual, right? <laughs> spiritual technology, <laughs> boom. spiritual revival that took place as a result of more people having access to the internet and to technology and more That's um, cool. sermons and, and spiritual mm -hmm. things going out there. So that could be one of them. Um, That's really cool. And, and maybe there would be a turning point between just socially after these restrictions are lifted, after there's not a threat to the extent that there is now, um, that people would uh, kind of be snapped out of this sense of of not seeking out face to face meetings. That that from this time mm -hmm. it right. became it, it was kind of a wake up call that you know what there's there's something that happens to me when I'm speaking to a neighbor in person or yeah. you know interacting with people that doesn't happen when I'm alone. That's cool. Okay, so those are vague, but. What about you? No, those are, those are fabulous. So I'm going to start just with some of the, the cool economic things that I might happen or that might happen. So I'm going to say that because so many businesses saw their employees being productive and able to work remotely, there became a lot more opportunities for like, um, making your own hours or being a work at home parent and having that just work into things. And same thing like you and I talked about before, like people being able to live in a whole different part of the country or world, which I think can absolutely help like the business's missions model. So you can be a missionary living in a whole other country, still employed at your employer now. Um, and so I see a lot more flexibility for workers in terms of like, not everybody needs to do that nine to five office thing. And I think that more people are going to get innovative and become like freelancers or entrepreneurs. And I think it's going to make the, the work ethic of, I guess I can speak to America specifically, just more balanced in terms of people realizing that 
working 80 hours a week isn't twice as good as working 40 hours a week. In fact, it's a lot worse. And if you can do your job in 30 hours a week, there's no reason to have to punch in 40 hours a week, you know, things like that. So I would, I would want to be the teacher who gets to talk about ways that like this really helped stay at home parents be able to be around for their kids, things like that. And I would also hope that something really amazing would come out of this just for the education system. And I don't know quite what that is because you know, like we're homeschoolers, but I absolutely don't want to see like public schools get flushed down the toilet or anything. You know what I mean? But I would love to see, and I, I definitely don't want to see um, even more like restrictions. Like I wouldn't want to see a national school <laughs> or anything like that, but right. I'm hoping that somehow through all of this, that, you know, the, the education system, the, the tools that are being put in place now do make sense. Maybe at least for some individual families, it makes them realize that they love that family time and that they can do this homeschool thing. And if, you know, I think there is a difference between like homeschool in the traditional sense and online school. Mm -hmm. And online school is going to be more accessible for some families, especially like those work at home families, like we talked about. So you get maybe a little bit the best of both worlds where your kids getting an education, they're getting interaction, they're getting teacher oversight, but they still get to be home with you. And I don't know. Those are, those are the first things that pop into my head. Yeah. And I, I like that too. And I just, I do feel like there are some opportunities for, for schools to, to be able to do things in a different way. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'll be exciting to kind of go back and, you know, in years to come to look back and see mm -hmm. what are, what are the things that came out of this, the good things? Yeah. Yeah. It's been positive so far. I've been keeping up really closely with like the daily and weekly updates coming for authors and like paperback sales are down, but all the other ebook platforms, you know, ebooks and audiobooks and all the digital stuff is actually like increasing a lot. So that part's oh. pretty cool. Well, that is good. That is very good. Yeah. I'd wondered about that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I know I went so, to get a book yesterday. Yeah. There are certain books that I like to get in paperback to make yeah. notes and certain mm -hmm. ones that I just mm -hmm. think the ebook is better because it's cheaper. It's, it's portable. right there. You don't have to wait for shipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this one I wanted in paperback, but they didn't have it available and, um, but they had it. And, and I just wondered if the reason it's not available is because of either it was through Amazon. I didn't know if yeah, it was they're available. deprioritizing. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what I'm wondering on. is not mm -hmm. necessarily that people don't want those paperback books, but that right. they can't get they're, them right away. So yeah, they go ahead and they're get being the deprioritized. E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I totally forgot. Oh, I wonder also going back to the history teacher, I wonder if one of the benefits that might come from this, like I, I love the fact that we live in an era with global technology and global connections, but I wonder, you know, even talking about Amazon, like sometimes I feel even like, especially right now, but even before this started, like, I don't necessarily love like shipping all the way up to Alaska. It just doesn't feel energy efficient. It doesn't feel, you know, like I'm not about to go, you know, march to save whales, but those things are on my mind just in sure. terms of, you know, being a good steward with our environment and consumerism isn't always that environmentally friendly. And I wonder if maybe all of this stuff is going to help us to learn to focus a little more locally first, you know, in terms of, I don't even know what that would look like, but that would also be a neat outcome so that, you know, like picture Alaskans where like the uh, bush villages and stuff like are, are almost 100% cut off right now mm -hmm. because like nobody's flying in or out. And so they have to be completely self-sufficient and that comes with hardships, but at least having the knowledge of how to be self-sufficient, I think is kind of important. So, you know, maybe that means that local communities do a better job like with preparedness or emergency preparedness or I don't I don't even know what I'm trying to say but to just be to realize that like the supply chain can be broken and sometimes it's good to have you know have those few weeks worth of food kind of always ready like I think that would be a, a good um 
societal norm. You know, everybody's got their kind of emergency supply and our grandkids are going to make fun of us because we stock up on toilet paper, but we know why we're doing it. <laughs> well, I think it's the same reason. So I had a friend whose grandmother, once her bar soap got small, she would mm -hmm. put it in a container with a little bit of water to let it get softened and so, and then and she would just keep adding to it and then make it in and it would turn into um pump soap like, like liquid pump hand soap, soap. was Interesting. a big thing and yeah. i was just like why does she do that but it was depression era thinking exactly and there oh, are yeah. several other things of conservation and and minimalism and things like yeah. that that are just really important and we yeah. as our generation you know, this is kind of the first time I think that, that many of us have started to think in those terms. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And I think that you can think in those terms without having to go overboard. Again, right. it's the difference between living out of wisdom and living out of fear, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, because I remember growing up too, it was often the excuse. I don't, I don't even want to say excuse, the explanation you would hear for behavior that didn't make sense to us. It was, oh, well, they lived through the Great Depression, you know? Right. That's why they've got 500 jars of buttons. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense for someone who hasn't lived through it, but it made sense for them. Yeah. And looking back, the one thing that I remember my mom did that she learned from her mom. So, um, you know, when you get the butter and it comes in that paper, like wax paper or whatever it is. So when we ran out of the butter, like our family, we just tossed the wax paper away. <laughs> my mom would use that as her um, cooking spray. Right? So you just kind of use the butter side and spread it over the casserole dish or whatever you need to spray down. And you I know, just do that. that. Not yeah. like long term. I don't keep it. Mm -hmm. but when I finish off the butter. I always uh -huh. try to like keep it so that yeah. I can use it to grease something. Cause yeah, it really, yeah. but, but yeah, in general, I just toss it. But yeah, all those yeah. little like helpful tricks that. Help. So, you know, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, everybody listening gets to be an eccentric, eccentric grandma <laughs> doing goodness. funny things. Thank goodness. <laughs> there are, honestly, there are times when I think, I just wish I was old so I could just do whatever I wanted and nobody would care. <laughs> but really, I don't think, I think I just, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wear my bathrobe all day. I don't care. <laughs> right. I'm just going to do that. I don't know. I think, well, so I think of that in terms of spiritual things, which I tend yeah. to be really hyper aware of like, okay, am I going to say something to offend someone? So evangelism mm -hmm. isn't my spiritual gift. I'm very timid in mm -hmm. sharing. I mean, I can share to strangers, but when it comes to sharing my faith or saying, can I pray with you to someone? If I don't know that they're a believer already, it's harder for me to okay. do that. And so there mm -hmm. are times when I think if I was an old woman, then somehow it would be easier, which isn't that funny because it probably wouldn't be. You are it who you are. Be. And That's I bet what we we're were told. To, yeah. You know, in our older years, I'm not going to name a number. When we're when we're right. old, um, I bet we're going to feel younger because I don't feel like I'm oh for sure now. I mean, I feel absolutely. I feel like a kid still trying to figure things out. So I'm sure I know. I'm older. I'm not going to feel. It's still going to feel the same wisdom and entitlement. But I know. Anyway. Well, that was something we were told when we were training for the mission field. You mm -hmm. know, because you get that sense too. Well, when I'm on the mission field, this is going to come easy. Mm -hmm. When I'm on the mission field, having a regular quiet time or evangelism, all these things will be easier because I'll be a missionary. And like, if you're not doing it now, you're not going to do it there. Right. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you want to segue into our devotion? Sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We've, yeah, yeah. we've got a call back, Jamie. So I told you in our last episode that I was going to think through yes, why it's tell your kid. hard for me. There you okay. Go. So I have a couple answers. Well, first we have to tell people in case they're listening for the first That's time. That's true. That's so true. So when your kids come to the door and want attention or want to interrupt you for something. This is where you do your work. This is where you, you know, do a lot of number of things mm -hmm. when you're praying though. And they come and instead of saying, no, not right now I'm praying. You say, no, not right mm -hmm. now I'm relaxing. Yes. Okay. okay. So I have a couple different reasons and I think it's probably a little bit of all of them. One of them is I don't want them to feel like they're interrupting God. Or, you know, because I could see it going either way. I could see them being like, she's always spending time with God and not with me. Or I could see them being like, wait, she loves me more than God. That, you know, and that's going to make God mad at me. Oh. And, and so I don't want it to be like, I can't interrupt mom because, you know, she's having her God time. That's some of it. 
some of it, I think, so that's probably the most of the superficial answers, but I think more deep seated, there's part of me, and I don't know if I believe this or I'm just worried that those around me believe this, but that prayer is kind of a cloak for being lazy. And Ooh, so that's I good. have, yeah, I have no problem. Like if I'm at the computer, I have no problem saying not right now I'm working and it's very clear I'm working, but I have a harder time when it's prayer because like I said, I'm, I'm still not sure if this is my subconscious belief or just what I'm projecting onto others, but there's part of me that thinks that if you're that into God, you should be doing things for God, not just sitting in your chair looking relaxed. <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's mm-hmm. good. That's insightful because I think that that sheds light on like even this morning when I when I yeah. had my quiet time, I went to my room and the kids were the kids had gotten up and they were doing other things and I just kind of stole away. My husband was in his makeshift office in our guest room and so I mm-hmm. went to our room and I actually sat in our bed with yeah. the Bible. And when I heard a sound, I thought, oh, I don't want anyone to come up in here and see me mm-hmm. sitting in bed in mm-hmm. the middle right. of the morning. They're gonna think I'm lazy, even if I have exactly. the Bible. Yeah. Or I'm praying that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that is very insightful. I'm going to have to to think about that and apply mm-hmm. that to other things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still kind of thinking through it because mm-hmm. again, you know, I don't have a problem saying I'm relaxing mm-hmm. and you know, I have no problem. I'm probably spending half an hour a day in the hammock and I, I have no problem with that. But for some reason it feels like, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's what I've been mulling over. To yeah. answer that question. That is good. I'm I'm gonna mull that over too. Okay. You do that. <laughs> and we'll touch back on it again next week or something. <laughs> All right. What day are we on in the devotional? Day 12 of 14. All right. So we've only got two more Ooh. after this. We're wrapping it up. And then the then the quarantine ends, right? That's right. Then that must be either that or Jesus <laughs> comes back. What are oh, the other? <laughs> Just Can kidding. You I know, like, especially some kids feel this, but I think even some adults feel this, like, I think there's a sense, there's a certain way that you can interpret scripture so that you would feel guilty because anytime you're not witnessing, that means that Jesus's delay is going to be prolonged. Do you ever feel that? Or do you remember feeling that as a kid? Um, I actually had kind of the opposite thing. Yeah. Where I there would be people that would say, oh, Jesus, come soon. And I would just be like, oh, my goodness. There, And it's kind of the same side of the coin, I guess, of that mm-hmm. same issue. But I would think, why do you want Jesus to come? There's so many people that are going to hell. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And I don't want Jesus to come. I want him to wait so that all these people can, you know. And yet, I would never felt like, oh, I should be witnessing. I just thought, oh, well, they need to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that say about me that I was, you know. Well, that's okay. I used to think like as a kid and teen, when people would say that, like, I hope he comes quickly. I would just be like, no, I like, there are things I want to experience. I want to know, like, I want to get married. I want to know who my life partner is going to be. I'm like, I don't don't want him to come quite yet. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to have eternity to spend. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What's the rush? (laughs) No, I, I get that. Well, and the other thing is, well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No, tell me the other thing. Well, the other thing is there are times when, um, when it's like, oh, you know, you'll, okay. Like if you hear about a really horrible crime mm-hmm. and, and some people will say, and I hope this isn't offensive to anyone, but you know, there's a special place in hell resolve, r- reserved for a person that will do this, this, or this, you know, when you're talking about Hitler or mm-hmm. people that do horrible things, obviously sin is sin. Right. But when you, when there are some people that are like, oh, I just, you know, can't wait for God's judgment. Mm-hmm. I in my mind, I'm like, well, or maybe, maybe it's more like why I wish God would manifest judgment now on certain people or things. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I, but then I think to myself, but if that happened and yes, I'm covered by Jesus, but I deserve that same thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyway. But yeah, that's just another one of those, like, yeah, looking at eternity. That was really probably not a great segue into our, Yeah. I don't know. No, I, I totally get what you're saying though. Even now I do like, there are some people that I would love to never have the chance to experience God's grace. And that's, that's a sinful, horrible, horrific attitude, but I get, 
get where it comes from. Yeah. Anyway, but the anyway. bottom line is we're all we're all in it together. We're all sinners. It's only because of Jesus that we can be with God. Amen. Wow. And Let's... and Hitler's bad. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, is that no takeaway? I don't think you can argue with that. I don't think and, there's anyone. There are a lot of gray yeah. areas, but not that one. Mm -hmm. He's a bad guy. And people who commit he really, was. really terrible crimes, you know, that's not good. Those are bad crimes. Yeah, let's not do terrible bad crimes. I'm, I think we can all agree. This was very <laughs> edifying. <laughs> it was. Well, our day 12 is spiritual revival. So we had talked about, like, I think it would be neat to look back on this time and see that there was a spiritual revival that came out of it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on a big scale. And um, be cool. yeah, so this, the scripture that, um, that was chosen for this is Acts 431. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Um, so, you know, I just think trying times, difficulties, persecution, all of these things are like just breeding grounds for prayer because mm -hmm. you get to the end of yourself and where else are you going to go but God and yeah. prayer is kind of the the breeding ground for revival and and it just is, has been yeah. in history and so um let's see um there's something that I have another verse in here for, so I need to find, oh, okay. So I guess, so part of the devotional part is just talking about when hard times come our way, we find ourselves stripped of some of the idols that we didn't even realize we were trusting for security. I know that's true for me. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. There've been, there've been a couple of days during this, this quarantine period that I have felt the need to consume something and I haven't known what it was. Like, I'm like, I need something. Do I need to check Facebook to see if there's like, you know, if I, if a post has gotten likes or do I need to right. check or do I need to eat something? Do I need to make coffee to, there's like an, an emptiness yeah. mm -hmm. and it's, it's a void that I think some of the busyness, some of the whatever, maybe stopping at Starbucks, maybe whatever it is that I would mm. do along the way to feed comfort. And right. when, the, when those things, the busyness, the, the things that that you do are stripped away. Mm -hmm. I think then we come to a place of being at the end of ourselves and, and figuring out like, Oh, it's God that's supposed to be filling those voids. True. Yeah. So, Although I think some of the void might also be just for relationships, you know, outside of that what is being in your immediate family. And that's not a, that's a good craving and God. No, given. That but is, no I get what true. you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anyway, I think just that God, God uses times like these to shed light on some of the idols that we've been carrying mm -hmm. around and, yeah. um, Definitely. yeah. And to consume them. So the, the verse is that I had that talked about God as a consuming fire, um, is be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord, your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything. The Lord, your God is forbidden for the Lord, your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. And obviously that's talking about physical formed idols, but it has to do with any of them. So the prayer mm -hmm. is just that, um, that we wouldn't just muddle through this crisis, that we would thrive, that we would be as the world is maybe in a, in a weird, uncertain spot that our spirits would be growing and yeah. pursuing God and that we would just be praying for revival. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really well said. Yeah. So let's pray. Almighty God, we praise you for being a consuming fire. The demons shudder at the mention of your name. Isaiah was undone at just a tiny glimpse of your glory. You have no equal. We confess that at times we forget your might and your glory. We grow complacent in our faith. We let the fire of your spirit grow dim. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus, the gift of your Holy Spirit, who waits patiently for us to remember who we are and whose. Fan into flame the gift of your spirit, Lord. We welcome your spirit fire to well up in us and to consume us and every idol we've allowed to creep into our lives undetected until now. Free us from the bondage to this world that keeps us from living and speaking boldly and loudly. Open our eyes to the spiritual reality that is so much more solid than the shadow we see around us here on earth. Let that truth conquer any fear or worry we might be feeling and launch us forward into world-changing revival. 
Let it begin in each one of us, Lord, and spread like wildfire through our families, churches, communities, countries, and throughout the world. Wherever COVID-19 has touched, let revival rise up in its wake, that you would be glorified in and through your people during this difficult time. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, it's great to be chatting with you again. Yeah. It reminds me of like every year when you go like on your Christmas <laughs> vacation and like two weeks in, we're both having dreams about each other. And, like we're going Radio through withdrawals silence. and shakes. <laughs> it is funny. I think the last time that happened, I had some kind of dream about, I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was mm-hmm. something, either I was guilty. I felt guilty for not oh, returning no. your call, or maybe I was <laughs> just sad because I, I don't know what it was. The cool thing is though, because we podcast together, I can listen to episodes of our podcast and I come away feeling like we've talked. I do that now too. I do the yeah. exact same thing. That's yeah. hilarious. So we could do that. Just, you know, who needs, who needs the real us? We just listen to a That's podcast. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's a facsimile of a facsimile of a friendship. <laughs> it is. It's not, it's not a substitute. But it's as close as we're going to get right now. <laughs> For a little while. But yeah, it's All good right. to see you. Good to talk to you. And yeah. Yeah. Have a great afternoon. Thank you guys for listening in and we'll talk to you all soon. All righty.